Hello, my name is Paul Miners. Welcome back to another one of my Asana training videos. In this video, I want to give you some tips for how to clean up your Asana account and how you can best prepare for the new year and a clean start in 2023. If you have any questions at the end of this video, as always, please leave me a comment below. And if you would like help in the new year, getting started with Asana on the right foot, optimizing it for your team, getting your team to use it better, or if you just wanna to get to that next level and get more out of the tool, then click the link in the description below to learn more about working with me and my team and the Asana consulting options that we have. I would also just like to say, if you've worked with us in 2022, if you've supported me in any way, or even if you're just a subscriber and you've watched a few of my videos, thank you so much for your continued support. As always, we, we really appreciate it. Okay, let's get into this video. Now to get started, chances are throughout the year, you've probably created some projects that you don't use, or maybe you use and they've, they've come to an end and they're no longer active. So I would suggest starting by let's clean up this sidebar. For example, maybe we have a project like this that uh, as you can see, there's not a lot going on in here. I can either archive the project if I want to keep the project uh, because I might want to refer back to it later, I can archive it. Or you can see here, here's an example, this test one. Looks like we created it, nothing really happened. In this case, I don't really need to keep this. There's no point archiving it, so I can just delete the project. And as you can see here, the following things are gonna get deleted. Any unassigned tasks that are only in this project. So if you do have tasks in this project that are also multi-homed into other project, or if you have any tasks that are just assigned to someone, those tasks will remain, but anything unassigned that's just in this project, they will be gone forever. Also any custom fields, rules, task templates, and read-only links, they will all be removed. So I'm gonna delete that. So that's the first, first thing I would do is clean up this sidebar and go through all of the projects in all of your teams to work out is there anything here that we can archive or delete. That alone is just gonna clean up your sidebar and it's gonna make everything a little bit easier to navigate. The next thing you could do is in the search bar, use an advanced search to try and find tasks that have maybe slipped through the cracks or gotten missed during the year. A good way to do this is you could look for tasks that are assigned to nobody and maybe in no project. So they're tasks that aren't assigned and they're not in a project. They're kind of orphaned tasks in a way. They don't really live anywhere. They're not assigned to anyone. And actually you can see here, there's quite a few examples. Uh, in this case, it's actually found a subtask. So what I might do is just add one more attribute and say subtasks, not subtasks. So I might refine that a little bit more. Actually, there we go. So that's not too bad. It's only found a couple of parent tasks now that are, again, just sort of orphaned. They don't live anywhere. And so what you, what you can now do is decide what am I going to do with them? Maybe I want to assign this to somebody or put it into a project. Or if this is just a project that uh, a task that is irrelevant, I don't need to do anything with it. I could just choose to delete it. The next thing I would do is review and update any tasks on your My Tasks page or in your projects that are overdue. Because we can't plan our time towards a date that's in the past. If it's overdue, if it was due last week or last month, we've now missed that. There's nothing we can do about it. And in order to plan effectively going forwards, we really need to have a date set in the future. So I might go through um, each of these tasks here and decide, you know, okay, this was due in September. What I should do is maybe book this for January. When I get back, let's let's plan to do that in January. And now, um, because I'm on my My Tasks page, I'm gonna put that in later. And so I'm gonna continue that. I'm gonna go through all the tasks here and decide what is the appropriate due date here. Or, you know, you might run into examples where actually this task is so old now, we don't even need to do it. Again, you can delete those tasks. You can do the same thing in your projects. And a handy way to do that actually is to go to a portfolio and you can see here how many of your projects in the portfolio have overdue tasks. So I can click on the 22 by Apple. Here's everything that's overdue. And again, I'm gonna go through this list and I'm gonna update the due dates accordingly and say, right, and make a decision about when would be a good time to do this task. Or again, I might decide actually we don't need this let's just delete it. But let's just let's just try and eradicate all overdue tasks in the account. Now, with your account cleanup done, we can now move on to the exciting part, which is the planning phase. Let's get into planning mode and decide what do we want to do in 2022. First thing I would do if you're on the business subscription is go to your goals page and review your goals that you currently have in progress. 
What you might want to do at this time is update your progress towards any of these goals. If I want to say, actually, we're now 800,000, I'm going to maybe go through my goals and update the various uh, metrics just to make sure all of my current goals are up to date and reporting accurately You know where we're at at the moment. There might be goals, let's just take this one here, for example, that I want to kind of close down now. Maybe it's, it's the end of the year, we didn't achieve this goal or we're, we're moving on to work on something else. So what I could say is we've either achieved the goal, we partially achieved it, we missed the goal, or we just dropped it, we decided not to do it. So I might just say we missed the goal and we'll post that update. So that's the first step I would do is just kind of review any existing goals in here, update the metrics and update the stats to show where are we at, you know, a good uh, being the end of the year now, it's a good time of year to review our progress towards each of these goals. Then you can get onto creating new goals for 2023. So I'm going to click this plus button here and I'm going to say right, let's uh, um, reach reach 100,000 YouTube subscribers. That's one of my goals. I can decide, is this goal for a, a particular individual or is it more of a, a company or team goal? So I'm gonna say for Paul, this is my goal. I can choose my time period. So is it just for the entire financial year? Is it for one of the, is it for half of the year or is it a quarterly goal? So I'm just gonna give myself the entire year to do this and I can choose whether to make this public or private. If I want, I can share this goal with other people. Maybe I want Warwick to be a collaborator on this goal and I can choose how am I going to update the progress towards this goal. I can do this either automatically by making progress and uh, ma making progress on and achieving my sub goals or by making progress on projects as I complete milestones and tasks in a project that can influence the progress of my goal. But for something like this that's kind of quite specific, this is going to require a manual approach where I can say right we're either trying to hit maybe a revenue target or in this case, a number. So I'm currently, I don't know how many subscribers I have. I think I have about 26,000 and I want to get to 100,000. So I'm gonna create that new goal. Let's go ahead and save that now. And uh, uh, so I've, I've set this for the entire year. I can put in a bit of a description here of, if I want. And maybe I even break this down into sub goals, things I'm gonna to do to try and achieve this subscriber count. So, you know, make more videos. Uh, let's create that as a sub goal and I can give that a metric as well. You get the idea. But now, end of the year, do it Do it now rather than waiting till January. I would go through that exercise of thinking about what do we want to achieve next year, quarterly or for the entire year. And, and we work with clients who sometimes use this for their own individual employees as well. This doesn't have to just be company goals. This could actually be individual employee targets as well. And the final thing I would do before you leave for the holidays, make sure you go to your profile settings and you can set your out of office. You can set the dates where you're going to be away uh, and, and when you're going to be returning. That's going to send, um, it's going to make it clear when people are commenting or assigning tasks, it's going to display you as being away so your team know that you uh, are out of office. So make sure you get that turned on for the holidays as well. There we go. There are a few quick little tips and tricks you can use to easily clean up your Asana account and get things set up correctly and some goals set up for a productive 2023. As I mentioned, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave me a comment below. And one more time, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in another video in 2023.